Before Ed Lundgren made a commitment for construction of a home using the permanent wood foundation, he asked many questions about building codes, approvals, ease of construction, financing, building integrity, and customer acceptance. The answers were provided by the Canton Lumber Company and Wood Industry Associations. Long-term tests on pressure-treated lumber and plywood have shown that these materials make the permanent wood foundation a practical reality. For example, at the U.S. Forest Products Laboratory in Madison, Wisconsin, treated wood stakes buried in the ground for over 40 years show no signs of deterioration. Wood used below grade is pressure treated with special chemicals to prevent deterioration from moisture or insect damage. These materials can be easily identified by their FDN stamp, referring to foundation grade quality. Proper excavation and site drainage are important to prevent groundwater from accumulating near the foundation. After studying the drainage conditions and the soil characteristics, the Lundgren Brothers architects, using the permanent wood foundation design manual, specified a gravel footing as a base for the foundation walls and a gravel bed under the wood basement floor to provide positive drainage. Doing the rock uh, versus uh, the concrete takes a lot less time. Uh, we put the rock in in approximately uh, two hours uh, with no grading uh, problems at all and uh, everything went amazingly uh, fast. To better understand this principle, we will show you the principles of percolation. We built this little model in order to show you how simply this system works. When I pour this water into the side, much as groundwater would flow, you will note how quickly that water moves down away from the foundation wall and out into a receptacle that you can see underneath. The site has been prepared and the crew has arrived. The gravel bed is machine leveled and hand raked to the proper elevation. The house is then staked to exact dimensions. For the foundation, stakes are driven and leveled along the locations of exterior and interior load-bearing walls. Two-by-fours are placed on top of the stakes, and a simple wood leveling drag levels and smooths the gravel footings that will support the footing plates. The footing plates are set into position. Care was taken to avoid cutting the ends of treated lumber footing plates. If a cut is required, the cut end should be dipped into an appropriate preservative solution. Check the preservative instructions and follow treating industry guidelines as approved by the Environmental Protection Agency. A final siting with a contractor's level is That's taken to check footing plate elevations. Minor adjustments can be made. The care that is taken up to this point assures that the entire house structure will be level and plumb. While all this work was underway, other carpenters were busy fabricating the foundation wall sections on site. Each wall section has preservative treated FDN wood studs, bottom and top plates, and plywood sheathing. All stud sizes, grades and spacing, and plywood thickness and grades are selected to meet the requirements of the wood foundation design manual and building codes. Any cut ends of studs can be placed at the tops of foundation panels to avoid field treating. Type, size, and spacing of all foundation nailing is specified by the design manual. Each wall section is set into place in sequence, starting with the first two panels erected to form a self-bracing corner. Note that the plywood sheathing laps onto a common stud at all panel joints. This ties the foundation panels together and gives greater strength. Each panel is positioned. All plywood seams are caulked with butyl or other approved sealant and nailed. Corner insulation is added if needed. Once erected, all walls are aligned and checked for level and plumb. Fine adjustments during this phase of work can be easily made. Untreated top plates are positioned and nailed into place, overlapping the panel joints for greater strength. Extreme Minnesota winters call for extra thick insulation. 
The Permanent Wood Foundation provides space between exterior sheathing and interior finish for R11 or R19 insulation. For our model house, we decided to use a pressure-treated wood basement floor for added warmth and comfort. Traditional concrete or masonry foundations and concrete floor slabs are often cold, damp, and prone to leakage of groundwater. Under floor plumbing and sump pump, if required, are set in the gravel base. Uh, Ed Lundgren comments on the advantages he experienced when plumbing this uh, home. Easy. Uh, plumbing was a uh, real easy uh, situation here. It took uh, about two hours to do all the groundwork and it's uh, much cleaner than uh, normal because the plumber is now working in uh, washed rock uh, versus uh, muddy clay. And uh, it really worked out super. The wood floor is constructed on the same gravel base as the exterior walls. Grade stakes are placed and leveled by transit. The gravel is raked to final level. Pressure-treated wood sleepers are nailed to the stakes to hold them in position until the floor joists are placed. A six mil polyethylene moisture barrier is placed over the entire floor area. Each strip is overlapped, not sealed, by approximately 12 inches. This allows rainwater during construction or water from pipes and broken fixtures to escape to the gravel before any damage can occur. Floor joist sizes, spacing, and blocking are in accordance with wood industry standards. FDN-treated lumber and plywood and hot-dipped galvanized nails may be used on all treated wood basement floor construction. The FDN-treated plywood subfloor panels are positioned, nailed, and glued to the joists. Finally, we are ready to place the first floor on the engineered wood foundation. The first floor construction is typical with floor joists 16 inches on center and 5 8 inch TNG plywood glued and nailed to the joists. Care should be taken to follow design specifications, especially in nailed connections and blocking from the floor framing to the top of the foundation wall. Backfilling is done only after the first floor and basement floor are in place and secured. Before backfilling, a 6 mil polyethylene moisture barrier is placed to cover the outside foundation. The top edge at grade level is secured by a caulked treated wood strip. This barrier assists in diverting water down the walls to the gravel base. From here, it must be directed by gravity to daylight or to a sump pump or storm drain, resulting in an extremely dry basement. Depending on the soil type, gravel backfill should be up to one half the height from footing to final grade level. In just two days, our builder has constructed his first wood foundation. With additional experience or using prefabricated foundation wall panels, many builders have reduced total time to one day or even one half day on many jobs. Let's take another look at the construction sequence. Wasn't that easy? Just about the same as for conventional exterior wall framing and sheathing. Just think about the advantages of the permanent wood foundation. No more scheduling and waiting for the masonry contractor or the ready-mix trucks. The same carpentry crew that constructs the foundation also frames the rest of the house. Construction is easier at remote sites where concrete may be more expensive. You can build in practically any kind of weather. Construction time and cost of financing is reduced. Plumbing requires less time. You reduce callbacks. No more cracked and leaking foundations. Interior finish work is simplified. 
gypsum board or wood paneling are nailed directly to the foundation wall studs after insulation is placed. There are no furring strips. Wiring is easier also. Best of all, you are providing warm, dry, extra living space at a reasonable cost. With energy-saving construction, fuel costs are less. That means better value to your home buyer. Now you know the advantages of a permanent wood foundation. These are the reasons why the permanent wood foundation has been such a significant development in the building industry. Why don't you decide on the permanent wood foundation for a future home? For more information and technical data, contact one of these wood industry associations.